What do you think is the biggest killer of people in the world? Is it a deadly virus like HIV? Or maybe a devastating illness like heart disease? Or maybe a condition like diabetes? If you guessed any of these, you would be wrong. The biggest killer of people in the world is hunger and malnutrition, currently affecting about 10% of the world's population. This represents about 750 million people, mainly in developing countries. However, if you travel back in time to the turn of the 20th century, hunger and malnutrition reached upwards of 40%. There simply wasn't enough food to feed the world, and agriculture couldn't keep up. This nightmare scenario threatened to halt human development and regress 10,000 years of human progress. Enter the genius that is Fritz Haber. He managed to force super stable nitrogen, which is abundant in the air, to split and combine with hydrogen to make ammonia, the basic, most important ingredient of fertilizers. Fertilizers went on to be used on a large scale bringing about a huge increase in crop yield and practically banishing the fear of famine in the world. Our modern world cannot function without fertilizers. Haber was born in Germany to Jewish parents. His mum died when he was born and he was raised by his stepmother. He had a thirst for knowledge with particular curiosity for chemistry. His father had set him a career path to him in dyes and paints and in the pharmaceutical industry. However, Harbour decided instead at the last moment to study chemistry and eventually earned a PhD at the tender age of 23. Before Harbour's novel process, most of the fertilizers that Europe required was imported from South America in the form of pigeon droppings and other nitrate compounds. However, this region of the world was politically unstable and the transportation was very expensive. Consequently, when World War I broke out, the Allies formed a naval blockade of all fertilizers going to Germany. This move was meant to cripple Germany and shorten the war since the nitrate fertilizers could be used to create explosive, as well as being used in agriculture. Harbour's monumental discovery saved Germany from early defeat and lengthened the war and suffering for millions of people. The nitrates did not need to be imported from South America anymore. It was manufactured in Germany instead. During the war, Harbour took a role working for the Kaiser Research Institute in Berlin. His early work looked at weaponizing chlorine gas, which ironically, he said, would shorten the war. Instead, he started the chemical age and cemented his place in history as the father of all chemical weapons. The first attack using this method was in Europress press in 1915. Harvard waited for weeks for the right wind conditions and the moment came. He ordered thousands of tons of chlorine gas to be released into the battlefield. Chlorine is heavier than air and so stays close to the ground, perfect for killing soldiers who had dug themselves into trenches. The Allied soldiers had no idea of the fate that was awaiting them. Ill-prepared and not properly advised on the dangers, many thousands of soldiers died choking violently. It literally brought chills to the most battled, hardened soldiers. The German government was very impressed with Harbour and rewarded Harbour with a promotion to captain and offered him mythical status that he so yearned for. His wife, one of the first women in Germany to receive a PhD in chemistry, was so disgusted by his work that she committed suicide. However, Harbour was unfazed by her death and arranged to be flown into the battlefield the next day. He was relentless in his progress in developing more potent chemical gases, including the notorious mustard gas. After the war, Germany had to pay back reparations to the Allies, a devastating moment for patriotic harbour. The Allies wanted to charge harbour with war crimes 
but instead he was awarded a Nobel Prize for Chemistry for discovering ammonia. Many in the scientific community were disgusted by his achievement. They saw him as a traitor and a mass murderer. The 1930s was a bad time for Haber, as anti-Semitic nationalism in Germany gained ground and his claim to being a patriot offered little protection. Ironically, Haber had converted to Christianity in his 20s to distance himself from his Jewish heritage. However, this offered little sanctuaries as the Nazis arrested and murdered Jews across Germany. Haber was devastated, went briefly into exile and died of a heart attack in 1934, alone in a hotel room while making arrangements to immigrate to the newly formed Israel. A sobering end to one of the most outstanding scientists of the 20th century. After his death, the Nazis further developed a few of Haber's newly discovered chemicals. One of these was Zyklon A, a foul-smelling pesticide. They altered the insecticide and formed Zyklon B. This was the new potent, odorless version. Nazis used Zyklon B to exterminate and eliminate all of their enemies on an industrial scale including, ironically, a large part of Haber's family. We cannot deny the genius that Haber was. Almost two in five people owned their existence to Haber's fertilizers. What a monumental achievement. Sadly, he is also personally responsible for the death of millions of people around the world through his chemical weapons. To this day, historians are torn on how to judge Fritz Haber. Billions of people would not exist without him, and yet without him, World War I would have ended much earlier. He fed billions with his research and rejoiced at the agonizing deaths of thousands. He lived in luxury, but died broken and alone.